Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Tomorrow is opening day. This morning, then I have a great hunt. Deer didn't move like usual. Everybody's got set up in the middle of this bedding thicket. Oh, and saving this spot from the rut. It's a nice, I think it's a nice buck. It's a 170. That was money. I think he's down right over there. 10 yards. Woo! Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. Baller rut. You're listening to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast where we can't do an intro on the first take. Still. Double bump. Double bump. Double on the bump. Right button. off the gate. I've been talking for 38 seconds. Homie said we ain't recording. <laughs> Back at it again. Still coming at you on Wednesdays. Let's prime rib. K- yeah, man. You, we, did, you had prime rib tonight. I had prime rib today. I'm proud. Yeah. I'm proud. I'm proud. Prime rib and shrimp. Ooh. Shrimp's like when you listen on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It ain't All prime right. rib day, but it's yeah, shrimp. Leftover day. shrimp sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. You know, <laughs> it's not. It's not real good. But Basically, this podcast. Do yeah, we can. whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we have way better content coming for you in this episode compared to the intro. That's yeah. for damn sure. <laughs> um, who we have on this week, homie? We had on Clayton Coyle. Yeah, Clayton Coyle, the guy who shot the elk in the chest. Oh yes, <laughs> I'm About sure you that. guys seen that episode. We we touch a little bit that on that this episode. Um, I'm sure you've seen that clip. Yeah, on uh, YouTube, uh, pretty epic. Um, he killed an absolute mega tank, 200 plus inch white tail. We cover that in this episode, and we cover him getting into filming. Um, him and his dad been doing a long time. Um, starting his own YouTube, so we always love to to shout out that so our listeners can follow another guy on YouTube and absorb some content. Um, let's get into the people that make this possible. VIP veteran Broadhead. Um, combat veteran, still still rocking, man. Um, have, have you been shooting it into any foam? We've had some keep a couple nice days. I would say I've had a couple nice days. I haven't got a Broadhead screwed on. I've been worried about um, getting my shot in for the one-shot yard league and the bow hunting league. Um, which VIP is a part of. So um, that's taken over my I got my, my brand new time. broadhead target, and I haven't shot one yet. I know. I got one for Christmas as well, and I have yet to send a, a new head into yeah, it. The the weather's just finally kind of breaking a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's, can... it's hit and miss. Like, I did my— It's not 20-mile-an-hour winds. Yeah, I was <laughs> say I did my shot yard league, you know, like five days early, yeah. you know, like because it's the only nice day in the, in the forecast. Yeah. So like, you got to get it in when you can. Heck, yeah. You got the, the VIP shout-out. Yeah, this week's shout-out is Marcus Weatherford. Um, he was in the Marines, and I I begged and begged for him to tell me um, a little bit more. He said, you know, man, I just want you to shout me out, and um, I just want to hear my name on the show. Said he was going to check it out. Um, after after begging him for a little bit, um, he did tell me what he did, and um, it was a long list, man. Um, you know, he just wanted to keep it confidential. Um, hopes to be able to get back into the woods um, now that he's not, no longer um, serving. So um, we'll uphold the man's wishes, and, you know, that's what it is. So, Marcus, we appreciate your service, and um, I, I know what you did. Um, here after the show, I'll man, tell Cody what you did. that is a solid name. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like um, that. Marcus with the K. Yeah. So um, we'll get you on the VIP shout-out board here in the studio, and um, you'll be remembered for WLP shout-out. Forever, man. Get into ECW calls. Um, they have a new batch of um, push calls, push or pull, um, single and double boxes are now available, and they have the um, the the picture or the background that was on the box calls last year. Nice. You know, um, a couple of toms on there fanned out. So those are now available on the ECW 
um, website, which is EmbryCustomWoodworking.com. I feel like if you're going to take a kid turkey hunting, you can't go wrong with that right there. They can't mess that up. No, push button is pretty <laughs> solid. Yeah, it's pretty solid. So as long as they don't hit it about 98 times, <laughs> right? um, I mean, I feel like they could feel like they're involved and, and hit the call a couple times, and, and that'd be the way to go. It would be. I'm going to say that's that's what I learned on. I, I killed a couple of Jake's on one. Did actually. you? Nice. Not ECW, but. What do you got on the Ingrams up there on the notes? Yeah, Ingram has been on the Coons oh, yeah. hardcore. Been crushing the Coons. Yeah, oh, I didn't know if he could read it or not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, he's he's been hammering the Coons. Not that many bush um, lights deep. I can still read. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll give you props. Um, what he, uh, he took in, I want to say, uh, 15 to 18 Coons. Yeah. He got 24 bucks. Yeah. He wasn't very impressed, I'll say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was. He did some, he he does all his, his tanning in his own hide, so yeah. he is tube tanning. Is that what he called him? Yeah, tube, tube yeah. Tube tanning. Some, um, so. A lot of guys seem to be like, "Hey, that was the way to go." Yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about it. I think it. that is the other style where they're flat like that okay. and tubed. It looks like they're kind of hanging. I would say both yeah, sides of the hide. Yeah, they so you kind of like roll them out like a deer for sure. And then instead of cutting them and laying them flat for sure. Yeah, I was that's that's how they looked in the picture. Is yeah. like they were they were rolled. I think out, it'd be not cool flat. to have a, a tube hide. I, I think when Rainer gets his first coon, I might tube hide it. I need to do. I got a couple squirrel tails. I need to get salted up for him oh yeah we had a pretty successful squirrel hunt <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i mean chris is doing it all right now so you know he he's full-time so he's he's wide open and you know available for anything except right now the coon hides are not going very high yeah yeah he's not very pumped <laughs> about that yeah. <laughs> all right um we're gonna get into exodus trail cameras we are breaking this right now Exodus trail cameras. We are now working with them guys full time. Um, they are going to have specific times where they want us to read or say things for them um, to promote, you know, what they have going on within their website, within their company. And, you know, we're going to do that wholeheartedly. But um, in the meantime, we're going to talk about our experience with their gear. Um, you know, we're going to, we, we have a new mobile cam. We have their new render that's, we're going to deploy this year. Um, we ran their Trek <clears throat> trail camera in the past um, on yeah, the past, photo. The past and, two years on photo and video. Yeah, photo and video mode. Um, it's hard to beat. So um, you're going to be here, you know, every week, us shouting out something from Exodus trail cameras. Um, be sure to check out their website, exodusoutdoorgear.com, and um, all of them on Twitter. Facebook and Instagram. Whitetail I, I, Cribs. I like I like that they're on yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah Check out YouTube, Whitetail Cribs on for sure. YouTube. So I would say I like they're on Twitter though. Yeah. A lot of people are overlooking that. Um yeah. there's still I'm gonna say I can't preach enough that, you know, there's that little niche market that I, I just don't believe that it's just us that have that, but you know, there's still a lot of hunters on there mm -hmm. that are still active and using that platform yep. as their media outlet. Yep. All right, well, let's get into scent lock. Um, we have decided to step away from scent lock, and we've we have we talked to a few people that have already known about this. Yes, and uh, they're all you know. The first question is why and what's next. So I'm going to cover the why right now. Um, the why is as whitetail hunters, um, we so we might promote a product, but if we find something that we want to try that we might think is better, we're going to go to it because we want to you know promote the best product to you guys right and scentlock is an absolute unbelievable product we used it for i don't know how many years before we even did anything with them you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah um i'm still running their oz bag still ran run all their camo um it's not that it's a bad product it's an awesome product it's just we want to try something different you know what i mean so we're not partnering with any other camo brand this year we're just going to branch out and try some other stuff and see what's out there um and that was kind of a, when you get into this industry, you don't know a lot. And um, we got in with them. It was great while we were there. Um, but we tried to step away and, and try some other brands. Me and Homie talked about it. We thought it was the best to do before we got really deep in their brand to if um, we feel like if it's a company that we're going to work with, we want to work with them a long time. And it's just we didn't feel like we could do that with Scentlock. Do you think we covered the, the why Yeah, pretty good? Yeah, and so. yeah, I mean, just like Cody said, you know, for the most part, we're still going to use, you know, 
a lot of their products in the meantime. Yeah, it's just we're not going to associate the podcast with them. Um, like I said, we're going to try other brands out there. We want to bring the best knowledge that we can to you guys. So um, what's next? We're going to try some other brands. We're going to try some other camos. We're going to see what we like in the off season, And then um, we have a lot of friends that are running other gear that we're going to try out. And just just see what we like, you know. I mean, I've been running Scentlock a long time. There's a lot of we checked out a lot of brands at ATA. A and, lot about the company that have come out a long way since yeah. I've tried something. Yeah, other than Scentlock and Scentblocker, you know. What I mean, and I feel like for the value, the price wise to what you get, um, I feel like there's some other brands out there that might be a little better quality around the same price. Um, you're warmer. Um, that's huge for me, man. I'm looking for that warm stuff and. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where next, man. We're just gonna try some stuff, and uh, I mean, when we when you guys see our content come out, you know what we're wearing because we've went through the ringer. And like I said, I got a lot of friends that are using a bunch of different stuff, and I don't know honestly what I'm gonna try or what I'm gonna use. But um, eventually, I'm gonna find something that I'm gonna run for the season. I'm you know how I am. Once I find something I like, I'm gonna oh, yeah. stick to it. You know what I mean? Say, yeah, that's why you have a nine year old bow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. So um, that's that's what we got going on there. We just wanted to shout out that we we hadn't shouted them out, uh, and we didn't want to just not shout them out and not tell the listeners what we had yeah. going on. So yeah, just kind of be a blank space and be like, well, you you guys always say this or you yeah, know, you always cover this. So because we already told a few people and they they wanted to know why, so that's our why and yep. uh, and we are moving on. Um, hats. You want to cover the hats? Oh man, dude, it's been a it's been a long time coming, and um, here in January we finally um, displayed our hats on our social media. Um, put a link right to the website, um, whitetaillegacypodcast dot com, so you'd be able to go there, find the shop, and um, get you a hat. Uh, we have charcoal gray and black. We have the real tree OG with black, um, both snapback right now. And um, if you want to get a hat, you can go right there and get you one. Um, we do have more stickers coming. Uh, more stickers will be here on the 17th. So um, we do have window decals. Um, and then more products down the line. We're, we're working on stuff. We're just working on the money to front to get everything in motion yep. at this point other than what we have on there right now. Yeah, well, big shout out to everybody that's bought. We've sold an absolute ton, more than we thought we would, you know what I mean? So shout out to the people that have purchased them and uh, supporting this podcast. Um, we definitely are not making a living doing this. No. <laughs> I had a guy <laughs> message me on LinkedIn like, I, uh, would you break down how you're making a living from podcasting? I'm like, bro, gee, you don't even know. If I was making a living from this, I'd live on tuna cans or something. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't making nothing, so... Um, but yeah, just shout out to all the, the listeners and followers that have that bought a hat or a sticker. Um, we got a lot of people that are wanting to just buy stickers, so we're yeah. gonna get some more in there in stock for you guys, and you guys can have at it. But hats are in stock for the moment that we release this episode, but we cannot guarantee <laughs> at any time that they will be there. So, um, like I said, just appreciate you guys hitting that like button. Um, buying some hats, subscribing, everything you do for us. Uh. Yeah, I, I want to shout out um, Matt Talkington and uh, Brian Johnson, um, also Jeremiah Gatsby. Um, a lot of guys out there supporting us every day on social and you know interacting with us. Um, b- bought a couple hats. Um, you know, just we appreciate you guys and everybody else. Yeah, um, that's something that we are gonna do. If you if you do buy something from the store. Um, we will be trying to give you guys a shout out. We think it's important. The people that have bought already, you, we already gave you a special thank <laughs> you because you were the first, first and running. But uh, if you buy something from the store, message us and say, "Hey man, bought you something," and we'll give you a shout out on on the episode for supporting us. Um, the last breath TV controversy. We yeah, got, we got the privilege of going on their podcast, like we shouted out on our social. Um, if you guys aren't following them, they're doing um, hunterverses where they're covering a edgy topic in the in hunting. Edgy um, for sure. Yeah, and uh, we covered jealousy in this episode. They just released it Monday, so this is Wednesday when you're listening to this in your ear holes. It came out Monday, so after you get done listening to this, go over there, listen to that, um, homie. You want to dive into that a little bit more? 
Yeah, you know, um, Grant had a very good five different types of jealousy and um, hit Cody and I with them. And we were able to give our opinions on it. And, um, you know, I think it's a really good outlet for you guys to learn about, you know, more about Cody and I. I know at this point you guys, you know, have listened to quite a bit, you know, a lot of hours of Cody and I talking um, you know, and even more hours of Cody and I listening and, you know, it, when you're a guest on a show is we try to be, you know, like we would want a guest and be very vocal and try to keep a show flowing and, you know, we kind of let it all hang out and, um, we give our opinions on, you know, the different types of jealousy that Grant has for us and, um, I, th- I think it turned out very good and there's a couple of them like, you know, we're not, we're not so one way or the other. Like we can, I, I can definitely see both sides of it. And, um, it, it just all is what you put into it. Yep. That's for sure. So check that out. Like I said, follow their podcast. Those guys, they're putting out content weekly on Monday. So it's another great podcast, another great group of guys that are, are doing good things to promote hunting in a good way. Um, let's get into the show. This has been kind of a long intro, but we had to catch you guys up <laughs> for sure. And, uh, Lots we of got stuff. the heater ripping. Yeah, a lot of stuff's <laughs> happened since since ATA and going through some stuff. So uh, appreciate you rocking through the intro for us. Let's get into the content. All right, boys and girls, we got Clayton Coyle on. Um, he's going to talk to us a little bit about everything. He's running Coyle Productions, um, killing some giant bucks, killing some elk. Um, he reached out to us. Man, I appreciate you reaching out to us and uh, coming on the show. Yeah, no, no problem. I appreciate you guys uh, allowing me on there. It's always nice to talk some hunting. Oh, yeah. We love it when a listener reaches out and says they want to come on. It's cool for us to be able to have the outlet, like we were saying, to allow people to tell the stories and uh, just make some friends. That's the best thing about you know having regular guys on is we get to make a connection um, that we wouldn't be able to make with someone you know that was a hunting celebrity or something. We can make a friendship with you, and you never know where friendships – friendships go but uh let's get into this and uh go ahead and introduce yourself and let the listeners know a little bit about you yeah my name's uh clayton coyle i am uh i'm a real estate agent in kansas and missouri um i specialize in in land and um developments um uh, was born and raised here i've grown up in kansas city go chiefs we just kicked butt in the super bowl yes uh so that was always that was a lot of fun i should have gone to the parade but i didn't um i love to hunt and fish it's basically my life it's all i do so uh yeah that's about that's about it really (laughs) nice kansas city kansas i spent some time down in there it's all right yeah yeah i never got to get out to the woods though (laughs) i was always in the city (laughs) so yeah yeah there's little there's lots of little pockets around here that have some big deer in them for sure yeah so we're gonna start off with elk hunting here um you have i think one of the most viral clips for elk hunting that i've ever seen i mean i don't know anybody that hasn't seen it really (laughs) so uh go ahead and talk about you know getting into elk hunting and then talk about that clip if you want to and take the reins yeah yeah man so so really for uh for me it all started when i was seven i was obsessed with bow hunting and my dad was like you know uh if you want to if you can pass your hunter safety education i'll buy you a bow we'll get you to 30 pounds and you can shoot a deer and so it started then and, and got my first deer that year and then it just started to fire me and um obviously i started to want to hunt everything so for my 13th birthday my dad was like hey you know you're old enough to go on elk you know let's go on a trip for your birthday um and we can go, go hunt elk. So I was like, absolutely. So I started shooting my bow, getting ready for it. And, um, we went to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and hunted the National uh, Teton National Forest, the boundary lines out there. So there was uh, tons of elk and, and grizzlies and stuff that made for some interesting adventures. But um, yeah, man, that 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 elk that elk video went pretty wild. I I actually obviously filmed it when I was like 13 or 14. I think I was 14 by the time we made it to the hunt, but, um, we, uh, 
sorry, I'm stolen. We uh, we got to Wyoming, and the first day we went out and um, saw a bunch of elk, heard some bugles, walked a lot, and from there on, uh, we didn't really see much for us that day. And the second day, we decided to go, our guide decided to go to a new spot that they had, they had to us that they just got for that year. And so we pulled up with the, the horses and whatnot, and we start heading up, and we hear a bugle. And immediately we, we stop what we're doing and, and get down and try to sneak up to see them. And there was like 100 elk out in this meadow. And uh, so we went we went into the edge of the woods, obviously, and, and called to them. And we probably sat there set up for like an hour and a half, just kind of calling every once in a while and listening. And um, by the time we hit like hour 45, two hours, we're sitting there with not much happening. We decided we were going to go see if we could spot them again and get closer. And, uh, like, right when, of course, it always happens like this. I don't know why. But once we got everything packed up, we got the camera packed up and all our gear, and uh, there's a bull ripped out of bugle, like, 150 yards up the hill. And, uh, I mean, we were scrambling to get set back up because he was close. So we got set up. Everything was ready. My guy just crawling behind me. You could see him up on the hill about 80 yards from us raking a tree. He did that for probably like 20 minutes, but it felt like an hour. And uh, finally he started, I mean, you can see, see from the video from there on, he came down the hill. And on our way down there to, the, to Wyoming, me and my dad had talked, like, you know, obviously you're not going to get a perfect shot every time, so what are you going to do in certain situations? And we talked, and, you know, I thought, hey, you know, I'm comfortable out to 30 yards to, to shoot an animal facing on. And, uh, that's just what happened. And so when he stopped there at that log, I was like, I can wait or he's going to either look at us and bolt. And so I just, once that thought went through my head, I, I cut it loose and, you know, they did the deal. So it was pretty crazy. It honestly didn't know what to say and or do or anything. It was like our guides were yelling at us to be quiet because they wanted to hear where the elk was running off. When they got down to us, they hadn't even seen it yet. And we're like, the elk's right there. They're like <laughs> blown away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When They're I like, when I watch the video, I'm on? like, I'm like, damn. And then I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you when you see the knock hit, and yeah. it, it's red, you know, or orange, or yeah. you know, whatever color you want to call it, and then the blood just starts coming, and you're like, okay, what is going on now? And the elk's just standing there. Yeah, he don't know what to do. Nobody knows what now. to do right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I actually had an arrow knock within like two seconds, and I actually drew back on him. While he was standing there, so he was—he, I mean, he saw me move and he knew I was there, but for whatever reason, he just didn't go. Stunned. I, I mean, I could have shot him again, but I saw him start to rear back, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't need to put another one in him. I think he's done." Yeah, it's pretty epic, you know? man. So, but yeah, you yeah, said that awesome. that will be premiering again on what show? It's on Viral Outdoors. Viral um, Outdoors. So, if our listeners want to see that, um, Matt Busby—is that how you say his last name? Buspus, yeah. Buspus, yeah. Buspus, yeah. Viral Outdoors, yeah. That's going to be cool. I'll be enjoying watching that again. Yeah. You probably watch that a yeah, hundred yeah, times it's and it's fun. still cool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so being so young, yeah. like, did it really, like, soak in that you just killed, like, a giant elk? Um, yes, obviously. No, I I, I couldn't have dreamt of a better, a better bull in a better scenario, but... I don't know, man. Every time I every time I kill a, a trophy animal for for whatever reason, which is why I do it, every every moment's a little different. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like for me, like like when I shot my 200 inch deer, I was just full of excitement, and uh, you know, I mean, it was just like an unreal deal. And then when I shot, I shot a different elk in in New Mexico. Um, I mean, it, it was a big bull, but. I fell apart. Like I, I could not control myself. I was crying for like an hour. I was hyperventilating. I couldn't catch my breath. And that, that to me was just a, a whole different, whatever, for whatever reason, I, you can't explain it, but it's just, it's every time different. So yeah, I mean, I, I knew I had shot a big elk and, and I, I hadn't really processed how, uh, how cool it was, like the whole nymph dropping in front of me. I guess it was just kind of 
in the moment it happened. I, I was more stunned that he didn't run away. I was more like worried about where he was going to run to. Now, you don't see a lot yeah. of elk drop no. with a bow. You know what I mean? With a rifle, you see a yeah. few, but most of the time they still go a little bit. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah. with a bow, you don't see him just like, and the way he dropped, just, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people have asked me if he uh, broke his nose when he did that. And the funny thing is, is when I, I, I hear him out of that bowl, and so when he was on my wall, I heard something when I was in my room one night, and I looked up, and the, his, I don't know what bone it is, but the half of his nose had broken off and fell. Wow. Fell off the Jeez. mouth, so I think he actually might have broken his nose. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Uh, can you maybe touch on, like, if the meat tasted different from your New Mexico bowl to your other one? Um, You know, I shot I shot my New Mexico bowl, like, two years ago. And the, the, elk, the famous elk I shot one, like, nine years ago. So I don't really remember that well, but, I mean, it's all good. I love it all. I would say, yeah, I know I've had elk meat from Colorado. It, it was a cow, but, I mean, it was just absolutely phenomenal. I think it was the closest thing to beef that you could get. Oh, gosh. Oh, it's it's amazing. I, we had it all cut up with super nice steaks. And, yeah, I, just, I wish I had more. Man, an elk <laughs> elk steak's just got to be absolute fire. Yeah. Especially if you shot yeah. it. Oh, dude. oh, yeah. Real pleasing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's how I got started out west. Um was basically that trip, and, and from there on, I've been to uh, Idaho. I was uns- unsuccessful there. Um, I've been to Wyoming again on a do-yourself deal, and that was an awesome hunt. But we just couldn't we couldn't get on them. We saw some bulls, but um, so we were unsuccessful there. And then we went to New Mexico, um, and that was a I mean it was a trip of a lifetime. I saw probably like six bulls over 380 um but we were just too early so they're still grouped up and being lame so they weren't doing nothing but the bull i killed was like a 300 inch bull but i just posted that video on youtube of it actually i don't know if you guys want to check that out later but um Um. it was just one of those hunts that i gosh after i shot him it was like the first time I've never been able to control myself, for sure. That's yeah. That's why I love this. why I love hunting, man. It's addicting. I would say you never know what each different situation is going to, you know, bring out of you or how you're going to react or an animal is going to react. And I think that's one thing that we all love about is just that element of surprise, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Is, absolutely. is elk hunting really as addicting as everybody says it is? Have you never been elk hunting? No. <laughs> I, I, Shit, tell, no. I tell every single person this. I tell every single person this. If you have an opportunity to go elk hunt, no matter what kind of hunt it is, pay for do it yourself, any of that, you need to go. Yeah, see, I, mean, it, like, is, I definitely want to go. It is an experience of a lifetime. I see it. And you hear it, your first bugle. People make it. People talk about it all the time, and they're not lying. Like it is. It is such a feeling to be out there chasing them man it's they say like giant turkeys right and um i'm a little bit more up on turkeys than i think the average guy is as far as hunting them but like everybody says once you go like you just can't not go again like you have to keep going and that's the thing i'm worried about because then now i got an extra hunting trip planned extra vacation time planned you know so yeah i'm gonna get out there but Uh, it's just you, you gotta, you gotta go. Make, you gotta make it happen. I mean, it's it's unreal. Like, I didn't go this year, and I've been pretty depressed about it. Like, man, yeah. it is an experience. So we just booked another hunt for next year in Wyoming. So I'm stuck to get back out there, and try again. But yeah, you guys need to go for sure. We might make it out there ten years, <laughs> ten year plan. <laughs> we'll have we'll have to do like we do now, just be like, all right, babe, we're gonna take the kids, yeah, make it make it about the kids, yeah. and be like, ah, we're actually getting out there. <laughs> That's how we do everything else. That's the only reason we get to do anything. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, you kind of touched on it here. We're gonna sh- transition to um, what we're wh- about, yeah, whitetails. Um, so we're gonna transition here to whitetail. All right. Um. You kind of mentioned it. So 
you've you've obviously you know grew up hunting and you've been successful you've got a buck down um he's got some character to him are they considered flyers or drop tines i've been told that they're considered flyers flyers yep and i think that's because they are off a tine they're not off the main beam Oh, I didn't so, know that. So I've been told. I can't remember if I asked the official score about that or a buddy of mine that's obsessed with deer, but yeah, I think it's considered a flyer. All right. So, um, can you maybe go into a little bit of that hunt and, you know, about that deer? Yeah, so um, his name's Carl. <laughs> uh, Carl started in 2016. I, uh, 2016 was actually the first year. I'm actually going to go, I'm going to go before Carl because it kind of puts the story together. Um, 2016 deer season, I was chasing a 200 inch buck that I had hunted for over two years. Um, his name was Ike. And he ran around with that deer that I actually posted like yesterday of that deadhead, mm -hmm. the 194 deadhead. Ike was, Ike was running with that buck. Um, and he was basically a mainframe ten pointer with a double main beam with a drop tine and like baseball bat mass. Um, so in 2016, I hunted him like probably the hardest I've ever hunted. I did like 17 straight all day sits. Um, it was brutal. But uh, the end result was I finally got him coming into a food plot um, and some corn and. He came in to 20 yards on, like, November 27th, and um, I never got it done on him because he came in and it got too dark. And so the next year, he got smaller, um, and I still hunted him because he was still a giant. That was in 2017, the year I killed Carl. So Carl... Me and my buddy were shed hunting, and he found his biggest shed ever, which was like an 82-inch five-point side, which ends up being Carl. And we found that about three miles north of where I killed him. So he traveled a lot. Um, but basically, I'm in, the real, I'm in real estate, so we, we bought an investment property that we, we knew was good for hunting that we could flip. And then, you know, to, to a developer or a guy that hunts or whatever. Um, and so we bought that property. And I was joking around with my buddy, like, hey, dude, you're going to have to give me that shed because that deer's going to show up on this new piece. He was like, oh, yeah, whatever. And that was like right after he found it. And so um, while I was hunting hike, I'd never seen Carl before. I was running cameras on the new property. Um, there was some decent bucks, but Ike was up. Ike was the, the man. He was the bigger deer out of, out of all of them. So I chased him and uh, never caught up with him. And then my dad actually spilled a, our corn trailer. We hauled corn with the trailers to our feeders and whatnot. He actually drove in a ditch on this new piece of property and spilled the whole trailer. And so he slapped the trail camera on it. And we had really... I, we were both hunting different deer, so we weren't really worried about anything else. So my mom was actually walking the dogs out on the new property, and she pulled the card, and we were looking at it, and that was when I got the first picture of it. And I immediately knew that it was the buck that my buddy had found the, his biggest shed off of. And then it all came together about how we were joking about him actually showing up. And so obviously a deer of that magnitude, I dropped everything I was doing on ice, Focus, turn my focus on this deer, and I came up with a game plan. And, uh, man, he was, uh, for being that big and, and as old as I think he was, which was like six or seven, you, you could really tell how smart he was. Because literally, I had him coming in. My first picture was of him was November 29th, and I got everything set up probably about the 1st of December. Um we had the only crops around like 11,000 acres. So that's why all these deer were coming to this, this property. Um, 
So I get the first picture of him on the 29th. I get everything set up on the first. Then immediately the first night of pictures, I have my text camera out there. Shout out to Gilbert. Um, sending me pictures of him immediately, like the first night out there. He's there, child born, not in the daylight. He was like, you know, middle of the night like they always do. So I'm like, okay, he's still there. Game plan set. I know I'm going to kill him as long as it keeps coming. So I started hunting him on the good winds, which it was a really, really cold December. I don't know if you guys remember the 2017 December, how, how brutally cold it was, at least here. Um, I mean, we were in like, like in the teens every day. So he was coming in every night. I was hunting when I could. Um, I think I, I hunted every single day in December except three. Um, so I would hunt. I would get in my blind. I'd hunt. I'd see probably 50 deer. It wouldn't come out. And I would walk back to my truck, hop in my truck, get all my gear off, look at my phone, and I'm and I have I have pictures from where I was just sitting. No. And sure enough, literally been out of the blind for 12 minutes. And he's standing in front of my blind at 20 yards right after I left. This was like probably December 15th after I've been hunting him. I mean, he's on camera every single night. So he does that to me. So I'm really, really starting to get irritated with him. And he's still showing up. I'm still hunting. And uh, he did. He actually did that to me two more times. Not exactly that fast, but literally within me getting in my truck and pulling out of there. So I eventually kind of caught on to the deer actually might be knowing what's going on. I don't know if he was, I mean, he could have been laying right there in the woods watching me walk out. You know, I have no idea. So I switched it up. I got closer to where he was coming out. Uh, just off of a hunch feeling, really. I didn't have any cameras out besides just the one on the corn. Uh, so I, I switched it up. I moved about 100, 100 yards closer to where I thought he was coming out. And he still he started showing up. He's still coming to the new, the new spot. He has no problem with it every night. And then about, like, right after you know, the day before Christmas, he did, it was the first night he never showed up. And so I'm like, you know, you immediately start thinking the worst. And um, so I, I went hunted on Christmas. I hunted Christmas Eve. Stopped showing up. Went on camera. We're now getting to, like, December 30th. And I still have not gotten a picture of him. So I'm like all down on myself. It's the last day of season. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to shoot the first mature deer that walks out. And I'm going to call it a good year. You know, this, this if I can't kill this deer, it's just not meant to be. I, he wasn't even really on my mind. I was so upset about him disappearing. Um, it's negative 7 degrees with a wind chill of negative 20. I have like a an acre of standing beans. So the deer is counting it. And I'm prepared to shoot. I had a, I had a few eight pointers that were old that I wouldn't mind shooting. Uh, there's a, a good 10 pointer that was out there that I probably would have shot just in anger, but he was a four year old. Uh, and the first deer comes out. It's a doe. And we're getting to like sunset time. The sun has, you know, the sun's just, just hitting the horizon. We have like three more does come out. And then a big group of does come out, like eight or nine of them. And they're all standing at like 120 yards. And I'm like, okay, you know, a buck's about to come out. They're getting all nervous. They're looking behind them. And I don't know if I can describe it very well, but there's like a, a big cedar tree that these does were standing pops his head out right behind those cedar trees and he's with all these does and it was like 
I, it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, he was, he was absolutely breathtaking. I mean, it was like my dad actually pulled his phone out and started filming me in the blind while I was watching him. And they stood there at like 100 yards and hung out for probably 20 minutes. He was chasing does around, making scrapes, rubbing trees, grunting. And uh, this one little tiny doe hops the fence, and she's she's in the field right in front of us at 20 yards. And once she cleared that fence, Carl flipped around, ignored everything else that was going on. He let out a giant roar, and he came running at the fence. He didn't even hesitate. Boom, jumps the fence. He's on that doe, and after this all went down, I finally realized that that doe was actually probably in heat. He was trying to, you know, not lose her. So this is December 31st, and it's like negative 20 degrees, so this is one of the worst things I've ever seen. Uh, so he's across the fence now, which puts him at 30 yards. I have all these clothes on because it's so cold. I have so much going on, and he's coming, and it's like all coming together that it's finally going to happen. So I get to full draw, and I don't know about you guys, but I can shoot my bow all day, all year. Uh, you know, I shoot really good for, you know, a, for 80 yards, I can shoot a QP lid probably five out of eight times, but... Whenever I have, like, the animal that I'm going to kill that I've been hunting, like, super hard for me, I, like, completely forget. Like, what about you guys? Do you guys completely fall apart, or do you guys really get to keep it together? I would say this year for me, like, I I was actually pretty solid <laughs> this year. Um, I had a mega giant on public, um, and I was pretty solid. And, like, we had, we're running wireless audio, so, like, I'm not breathing heavy or anything. I'm just really cool and calm um also had another buck on our private piece come out um kind of uh one of the slower um turn of events that i've had uh with a buck and um i was able to th up there i was actually thinking ranging um something I, that i don't do a lot on actual live deer so i would say this year um was a pretty solid year for me like in the moment getting it done um, obviously I didn't get it done, but like, as far as like everything leading up to the shot, um, I was pretty solid on, uh, in years past, yeah. um, you know, you, like when you do shoot a buck, like, I mean, for me, it's like the moment after you stop seeing the deer run, like, you know, your last sight, or if he goes down within sight, like that's when it hits me the most is like, you know, knees start yeah. shaking. You don't know if you're cold or if you're excited or, you know, you're both. So what about you, Cody? Yeah. Well, like like I was saying earlier, you know, like every 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 deal is different. But with this one, I mean, I was watching him for 20 minutes, so I'm rattled like to the bone, like I am tripping. I actually pulled my phone out and took a picture of it. <clears throat> but uh, so I came to full draw, and for whatever reason. I had no reason to stop the deer. I mean, he was going to come into that doe and probably stop at some point. But I stopped him. And once I stopped him, I, I shot. And, dude, I shot like a foot over his back at 30 yards. And then uh, that doe, it, it all, so there's like 15 deer. But the only deer on my property that are across the fence are him and this doe that he jumped across to get to. Uh, and so when I, when I missed, she took off one way and he went the other way. Well, he didn't want to lose sight of her. So he actually stopped at like 50 yards and it, it, it's in God's hands now. Somehow I got enough time to stop an arrow, range him, adjust my, my sight. I was shooting a single pin, which I still am, but I, I adjust my sight and I actually stopped. He, he, once I got ready to draw back, I had put my finger release in my pocket, and I thought it was on my string. So I actually went to grab that and, like, fumbled my arrow around and stuff until he <laughs> heard it. So he, 
he started to he, he took a step and so when he when I saw he was about to move I stopped him again. I I drew back. I was like coaching myself in my head like you just screwed this up, you better freaking pull it together and I cut it loose. And I like it was like slow motion, like I watched my arrow just like sail right to him. I knew it was gonna hit him and it just went it just went forward of his like if you go center leg up to like where you think the heart is, there's like the shoulder elbow part right there. Mm-hmm. Basically hit him at like the front of his shoulder and I was shooting a Schwacker broadhead and it actually cut, it broke both of his front legs. But the problem was, was I was in a hay bale blind that we had made. And so I could only see probably like 45 degrees. I got a 45 degree view. And, uh, when I shot it, he ran like directly back behind us. So I couldn't see him. I knew my shot was like decent. Like I saw blood. I knew his leg was broke, at least one of them. And I just like, I mean, in that moment, I kind of looked back and wished that I had relaxed and just kind of enjoyed it a little bit. But I was like dead set on knowing where he went. So I flipped the hay bale blind over. My dad was with me. Um, <clears throat> They go blind over, and I immediately start going to look for him because I knew that he wasn't, you know, he wasn't going to be far with his with his leg messed up like that. Um, and I got way ahead of myself. I completely like fell apart. It was terrible. <laughs> but I, I immediately started looking for blood and whatever. I'm trying to track him, and my dad's like, "Dude, calm down." Like, just like I got to know where he went. So we finally got on the blood trail, and I'm glad we did because there was blood just like everywhere like so much blood there's a little dust in the snow so uh i didn't know what this deer was gonna do he was running towards the road and he was running towards property that i didn't have permission to be on and so i didn't i didn't want him to get out of my property so we immediately started tracking him and we walked up on him and he's still alive and so i put another one in him and finished it off and it just was crazy celebrations from there. I was so glad my dad was with me. That was just one of the one of the most special moments for sure. We were both so rattled. And it was like negative twenty degrees, so like we're freaking out trying <laughs> to enjoy it. But at the same time I'm like, All right, let's get to the truck. You know, like let's get warm. <laughs> yeah. But it was it was a moment of a lifetime, man. I'll never forget it for sure. I will say like, you know, in that moment when you are so worked up and you know, you do miss like your first shot, then like that second, when you, if you do get a second opportunity, like I am just so rock solid because you know, like you're kicking yourself in the ass. You're like, I'm a dumbass. I shouldn't have done that. I need Uh-oh. to do this. You know, you're just replaying it over Uh-oh. real quick. And then when that second oh, yeah. opportunity comes, you're just like, you're so doubted. in like, well, why didn't yep. you just do that on the first shot? You know? Yep. Exactly. I, I probably called myself, 10,000 words in like a second. Because the story I've wouldn't have been as good. Yeah, right? <laughs> you got to miss the yeah. first time to make the story better. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You got you to keep it interesting. Yeah. Man, that's that's so, awesome. I've seen that picture, man. That's an absolute giant whitetail, man. They don't get much more you know, typical and big like that. So it's it's super, super awesome. Yeah, off the ground sure, too. I'm, that's that's pretty sweet. Yeah. But you get that kind of temperatures, man. You gotta go in a blind. Yeah, I mean, there ain't no way in a stand uh, in the wind. There ain't no way. So props to you for going out I mean, there in that cold. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that December was like the most brutal December. And like I said, I was out there every day in December, but like three. So man, it was it was a grind for. That's probably the the hardest I've ever grinded it out for sure. <laughs> Yeah, it makes it sweeter when it all comes together when you put that much effort and time into to one deer and to for it to come together and man, you're lucky lucky your dad drove that corn corn wagon over that <laughs> <Right>. ditch. <laughs> so Sorry, I'm losing you guys. Uh, I said I'm I said I'm lucky that you're lucky that your dad drove that corn wagon over that ditch. <laughs> I know, dude. If it wasn't for that, I would have had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. And then, and then when I got the picture of him, I really started bugging my buddy about that shed. Oh yeah, he ended up giving it to me. Nice. <laughs> well, props to him, man. That's a, 
that's just crazy. Yeah, like, crazy thing. like Go you ahead. know, you found that shed, you know, three miles north, which you know, and then you're hunting late season. For him to be at your where you were hunting him, you know, and then the shed, you know, three miles away, like that's a long time to travel, you know, in the late season. But, you know, during the rut, we could definitely see that. But, you know, for the late season and then just, you know, the quick turnaround to shed, I mean, he might have shed into February, beginning of March or, you know, January or, you know, who knows whenever he shed. But just to travel that right. distance to get back to, you know, wherever his home range was, one or the other, you know, that's. Well, I think, I think in his case, he was chasing crops. Because where he lived, there was not, I mean, I had the only crop field, and then there was another crop field that was probably six miles north. Yeah, with ag, I mean, that far away, that's kind of crazy to, for me because we got a lot of ag around us, mm-hmm. and then we get pictures of him, and he's, you know, Magnum PI we're talking about, you know, he's three miles early season from where he is rutting, and then if the shed that I found last year is actually him, that's another two miles to the north or mile and a half to the north of where we found him rutting and it'd be like six miles from where we found him in the summer yeah so that deer is really traveling but there's no road he's crossing one road what about the one you found in the back in the back now that was an no. old shed okay that was the shed that have you ever have you ever found a shed put it in your backpack and lost it on the way out <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have done that. Have I have you? done that. I found a shed on some public ground, really nice one. Put it in the backpack. I'm trampling through like this marsh with eight foot tall, you know, cot cot. What? what That's you, the one you lost. The yeah. one you sent me a picture of. The one back there in the back, under yeah. the grass. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, the All one. Right. Yeah, I lost it. That's the one I found on Snake Den. Yeah. Lost on the way out, so it's probably still out there. We might be able to find <laughs> it this year. <laughs> Can you find a shed twice? I don't know. That would be cool. Be like, if I find it, I'll know it's one. I'd be like, right? yep, that's the one. I lost out there. Now but... it's totally bleached because I'm sure you yeah. got it. It's all turned over now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, it probably got washed away because I'm thinking I lost it in that bottom. And it when it flooded this, yeah. this spring, it it's in a pond somewhere. Some beavers chewing on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you're talking about your film and white tails and you're starting, you know, you got your own production company. Let's go into that a little bit. Yeah, I, it, it's not much of a it's not much of a company. It's really just me. Uh, Oil Productions is just me. I I just photograph and video my stuff. I just made that up, so I have uh, uh, basically a, a title or a, or a signature. So uh, Oil Productions is basically uh, just fun, having fun in the having fun in the outdoors and sharing it. I just really do Instagram, so. Um, but yeah, so I started on when I was seven and my dad actually filmed me since I started. So it's kind of been a thing of ours that we've always filmed each other, um, hunting and sharing all these moments. So that's always stuck with me. I've always had a passion for that. I enjoy, uh, making videos and, and being able to have those memories on film. It adds a lot of fun to it. Um. So yeah, I, I basically I, I've I've just got it. I've just got into the photography side of things. I mean, we've always taken pretty cool pictures of our of our harvest, but uh, I finally said, you know, I film all this stuff. I need to get good at taking photos too, and so I just started doing it. And I've I've worked with a couple of companies. I worked with some, uh, Schwacker Broadheads on some stuff. Um, so I'm just kind of rolling with it, seeing where it goes. Wouldn't mind trying to make some money off of it, you know? Hey, man, you never know. Yeah. Just keep keep going at it. But, yeah, I think it's awesome that you're filming, especially with your dad. I, I filmed, like, every shed that my son's found, and I got to, like, put together, and it's, like, a minute and 40 seconds now. And one day when he's older, I'm going to show him that, you know, and he might think it's awesome. Or he might not, but I still got it, and I think it's badass right now. Yeah. So I know 20 years, I'm going to be like, dude, this is the coolest video I got. Right. Him just finding Absolutely. 60 sheds, you know what I mean? So I make it a real big Absolutely. point. Like every time we find a shed with him, I got to stop, get my phone out, film it. I've only missed one right now, and uh, it's one like the dog found and then dropped and then he found. So I'm like, ah, is this really like a legit <laughs> one? <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's still a lot of fun, man. It's still cool to have, you know, all that stuff. Like right now, especially, you know, you doing what you're doing, like, 
and you already said it, like you get to look back on that stuff. You get to watch you stick an elk, you know, quarter into you and just go down. Oh, yeah. I mean, all that stuff, you know, whitetail kills. Um, I mean, man, dude, like if I had that, that would just be super cool. I'd be showing my oh, kid yeah. right now instead of the. We got tons of stuff. And, and that's the thing is that's why uh, I actually just this year I've made it my goal to make about like a video a month and post it on YouTube. Uh, you guys might go follow me and check it out. I just posted my first one, which is that New Mexico elk hunt. Uh, and I have a couple that I've posted over the years, but I haven't done anything for a while. What's your YouTube so handle, have, Sam? Uh, it's Coil cool, it's cool Productions, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. Not, if, we'll hit you up. We'll share the so, love. We'll yeah, check it out. We'll check it out. I'm going to say I'm always, yeah. always on there. So I literally have, I have so many hunts from since I was seven just stored up that I'm going to start cranking out, so. That's some awesome. Some will be cool. Dude. Some will be just short clips of hunts or whatever. So yeah, we'll keep it, it entertaining. I would say that's something that you know we kind of fall short on is um, posting like you know the raw clips or the short clips. Um, we need to get better about it. We've talked about it. It's just you know time to edit. You know, get some stuff strung it's together. Of, it's a lot of work. And and props to the people out there that make it look easy because there's a lot of people that put out some sweet stuff like those un- i don't know if you guys seen those unguided outdoors the boat fishing dudes yeah yep yeah those guys we are, follow them on tiktok awesome. don't we? We, we, we met them through tiktok yeah we so. follow them on tiktok yeah man those guys are putting out some cool stuff yeah yeah they've so had that's, some that's incredible kind of, hunts man yeah so that's so. kind of where i'm getting I've, I've got some stuff and and i'm gonna i'm gonna put in the time and the effort to, to really try to make some cool videos these were they that's the one that just years. posted that spike buck that was like a foot away from the? Bow? Yeah, I said watch. Yeah, or, it was either them or the hunting public. No, it was, no. I think it was. Un- I th- yeah. it, it was I titled it like TikTok. "Watch Me Get Run Over by Run Over by a Deer." I can't remember. No. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, <laughs> I had the deer. Like all you see is the ass crazy. of the deer right on the thing. <laughs> so. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, man. We always tell people like if you want to, th- if you're thinking about filming, starting, you know to want to do it just just get some stuff and start doing it because it's so cool your production doesn't have to compete with anybody else just do you like absolutely like me and homie yeah. the way we film and tell our stories is completely different than a lot of other people mm-hmm. and we don't produce a lot of films because of it but our films aren't like our our main gig you know i mean we film because we want to film like we want the memory yeah, that's how i am it's super cool. I'm It'd not, be super cool for you when you get older and you have a kid and your son's like, hey, daddy, I want to watch you hunting on YouTube. You're like, yeah, yeah that's yeah, cool. Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's cool. Yeah, so. super cool. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm not the guy that'll that'll pass up a, a shooter buck to get it on video. Like, there's some people out there that'll let them walk. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I'm not there. It ain't, yeah. it, ain't that, it ain't that important to me. I love it, but. I'm gonna shoot that thing. I'm yep. not there either. I <laughs> yeah. proved it this year. <laughs> and just we like, a, just we like, actually, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, you know, Cody and I. I don't know how many times we sat out here in the studio and just watch, you know, the raw clips. Um, the raw clips are pretty cool to just kick back and look at. Let alone, you know, your production yeah. because I mean, the, it's all polished and looks nice, and you know, the camera's solid. But it, you know, four seconds ago, you just tripped over that log going up the hill, and the camera's everywhere, and. The raw clips are, yeah. you know, a dime a dozen. Yeah. We actually, uh, my dad actually filmed uh, my 215, but it was so cold that the camera didn't format the video correctly on the SD card. So we had it all on film. He had it, but we just, it, the card froze or the camera melted, whatever happened. Man. Could you imagine? That I, sucks. Yeah. How, how'd that if go when you that found that video, out? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it, it was a bummer, but I mean, dude, I killed a still got dying it, deer. Still got it done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I still got him. Yeah. So. yeah. In the end, yeah, that's man. what it meant. You know, I mean, uh, to the people that are out there that are doing it, you know, and they're making money and they're doing it for a living, like, you know, I, I props yeah. to them because they are passing deer to, to entertain people. Right. But guys like me yeah. and you and, and homie who are, we're, uh, we're trying to create something, but, uh, we're trying to do it our way, and I keep telling homie, like, when it becomes work, it's different if you're w- doing film and you're getting paid for it, then it should be work. And But right. in my mind, if you're doing film just to do film, 
it should be fun. And when it automatically becomes not fun, then you're not going to take your stuff and then you're not, yeah, then you're, sure. you're not filming anymore. So like, does it suck yeah. carrying all the extra bullshit in? Yes. But when you're up there and you're creating the content, you're getting the video or like, you know, you video a buck hitting a scrape at 12 yards. Like you're like, that was pretty, that was yeah. pretty cool. And then it's all worth it. You're like, well, I'm going to pack it in again tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love filming them for sure. <clears throat> have you have you um, done any realty videos with uh, with you know your daily job there? Um, you know I haven't. You mean like a like a like a vlog or like like real estate like like a, like a real estate selling. video for you know you showing off a house? Um, no. All right. I don't. I was gonna say I was gonna no. need some inside I, scoop. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I should, I should do something like that. I don't know. I just don't like putting myself out there being awkward. Got to put yeah. yourself out there, man. You do. <laughs> what that, you crush, one thing yeah. that me and homie has learned: there's always someone that's gonna be like, "These guys are awesome," and then these other guys are like, "These guys are bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> so you just yeah. gotta just well, don't I, listen to either of them, and then you're you're solid. You know what I mean? That's what we do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm not. I I do a little bit of everything in real estate. My my our main deal is we buy and, and fix houses up and sell them, uh, and then like seconds probably buying land and, and splitting it into like big acreage lots and selling them off that way. Uh, but you know, I've dabbled in some hunting properties and stuff, so I I kind of do a mix of it. So I'm not really trying to to uh, just do one specific thing like selling selling houses or, or selling people out i'm, I'm more into the to the land and the getting in on the action side of things right yeah i would say you got to keep your portfolio diverse you just don't want to get too much into oh, one I, thing you I, know I, right right um so. well we'll wrap this one up here um let the listeners know where they can find you and follow your stuff i think we've kind of hit on it yeah um uh, you can find me on instagram at coil productions and um, my YouTube, you probably just search Clayton Coil. You'll find me from the other video for sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, just subscribe on my YouTube. I'll be posting some cool stuff in the next couple of years. So I want to say, man, we're excited to follow out. you and you know make the connection and be able to watch your journey. Yeah, and huge thanks to you guys for letting me come on here. I, I dig what you guys are doing and enjoy the podcast. So I wish we could have met at ATA. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been super cool. Um, you know, next year's ATA is going to be a little different for us, I think. So we'll have a little bit more free time and uh, be able to really meet everybody, you know, that we come in contact with and, or at least try to. I, You know, you, you run into a guy and next thing you know, you got a 20-minute conversation and you ain't even talked about anything. So um, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll definitely keep in touch and um, we're going to go hit up your YouTube and check out this New Mexico hunt. Sounds good, man. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good night. All right, and there we have it from Clayton, who, um, you know, I, whenever anybody comes on here and talks about, you know, having them memories and stuff from, you know, starting out, you know, their first days into the woods and, and having it up till now, you know, it, it just kind of hits like a soft spot in me because, you know, I don't have as many of them memories, you know, etched in stone like they do. And, you know, that is something that I wish I had, but... Um, I'm glad you and I have both taken the initiative to do that for our kids in case they do want it. And just like you said, if they don't want it, you know, I still have it for me. So, um, that's something to, to think about as, as you try to leave a legacy and, you know, think about getting your kids, you know, whether you are photogenic, you know, Maybe your kids are photogenic, so get out there, take some pictures of them in the woods. Um, maybe take a picture of them with their first shed and leave a legacy and watch your legacy is out.